Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you in this second day of the third month of this new year, which soon will become an old year because everything comes to an end. Time goes by, time flies by. But those who do the will of God will remain forever. Pay attention. I would like you to understand something concerning what we said yesterday there from the book of Ecclesiastes, right? That the body goes back to dust and the spirit goes back to God that gave it to the human beings. But it doesn't say anything concerning the soul because the soul is a decision from each of us. Each one of us needs to make the decision of the destination of our soul according to their needs and interests. However, we were thinking in something really nice, very strong, very glorious. The Bible here says in the last two verses of Ecclesiastes 12, it says that from everything that is heard, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, which means from all the messages, all the preachings, all the teachings, which we give, which all the people give, the theologians, the pastors, the men of God, the teachings that are brought to every people, all of these, there is a conclusion, and the conclusion is this, fear God and keep His commandments. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is man's own. So every human being has this duty. Pay attention. From everything that you learn from the Holy Scriptures, everything that you read in the Holy Bible, everything that Jesus said, the prophets, the men of God spoke, it's written. From everything... The conclusion is the following. The end of all this is the following. Fear God, fear God and keep His commandments, His word. This is it. It's very simple. It's not complicated to understand, isn't it? Now, what does it mean to fear God? How can we evaluate the fear of God. How can you see if you fear God or not? Many people think that to fear God is to be religious. They go to church, they do charity, they are good people, they do good works. They think that this is to fear God, but it's not. It's not what it is. To fear God means the following. Jesus said, for example, I'll give an example that will make it easier to understand. Jesus said like this, forgive and you will be forgiven, which means if I fear God, I will forgive those who offended me. If I do not fear God, then I will not forgive. This is to fear God. For example, Jesus said, Give, and it shall be given to you. But if I do not want to give, if I deny to give what I have, if I deny to give a piece of bread to someone who is hungry because I think that they don't deserve it, then 
This is not to fear God. This is to disrespect God instead. So I have each word actually that you read in the Bible to summarize, summarizing everything. Every word that you read in the Bible, you have to be attentive to those words and to obey. This is to fear God. This is it. It's easy, isn't it? It's very nice. Jesus said that we should love the Lord our God above all things with all of your understanding, with all of your strength. So if I love him, but not with all of my strength, not with all my understanding, if I do not prioritize him in my life, then I'm not fearing God. Let's put this in a clearer way, in a more objective way. So, for example, you who are watching us now, evaluate yourself. Evaluate yourself. I, I ask you, who is sitting on the throne of your heart? Who is sitting on it? Who is first in your heart? Who is the first person in your heart or the first thing in your heart? For example, if you have your mother as first in your heart, then this is not to fear God. You don't fear God. If you have anything or anyone on the throne of your heart, then you do not fear God. You do not fear God. That's what to fear God is. When you place the Lord Jesus as Lord over your life, reigning inside of you, then this is to fear God. To fear God is that. It's when you put into practice straight away everything that is written in the Holy Scriptures. If you do that, you are fearing God. It's like the wise King Solomon said, the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God and keep His commandments. For this is man's own. It's the duty of every human being. It's the duty of each of us. It's the duty of each of us, human beings, to fear God and keep His word. Why? Why is it? For God will bring every work, He will bring every work into judgment. Every work, our thoughts, our words, the intentions of our hearts, all of these will be brought into judgment. For God will bring every work into judgment, so He will judge everything, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So everything is going to be brought to surface, everything that is hidden in a person's heart. Sometimes you don't know what the other person is thinking, but God knows and it's registered in heaven. Our thoughts, our intentions, our words, none of these things will get lost. None of these will be forgotten. It's what the text says here. God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing. Every secret thing, whether good or evil, which means that everything will be clarified in the judgment day. So, whoever thinks, whoever reasons, obviously starts to then put into practice 
immediately what is written to fear God and to obey His commandments, His word. This is it. If you do that, you will keep your soul to live eternally with God. But the question that I asked and I repeat is that, who is sitting on the throne of your heart? Is it your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your future, your money, your position in society? What has been sitting on the throne of your heart? The other day, a gentleman came to speak to one of our pastors and he said, listen, pastor, I lost everything I had and he showed pictures of himself alongside very important people from this world, people who are very famous. And he showed the pictures and said, look, I was a very successful man and I lost everything, everything, even my dignity, I lost it. And I was about to end my own life because of these losses that I faced. So you see, he came to a situation that there was no, nothing else to do with his life. He wanted to kill himself. However, the Holy Spirit obviously guided him to the Universal Church. He came, spoke to the pastors, received a word of faith, and that was it. He started a new life. You see that when we observe the Word of God, things change inside of us. And once it changes on the inside, the exterior will change. When the interior doesn't change and it continues the same, then things on the outside will continue to grow worse. So those who are wise, they take better care of their inner being infinitely more than the exterior, because the exterior will be left here, will turn into dust. The wisdom that God gave will return to him. But how about the soul? The soul, each person has to decide for themselves. And obviously, in the judgment day, that's exactly what's going to happen. He will require from each of us those things which he's given us. He gave us a spirit. He lent us a spirit. He lent us a soul. And he lent us a body. So the body goes back to dust. That's already determined. The spirit goes back to God, which is wisdom. But the soul, God lent us, and he will require this from us. Everything that the soul did or didn't do, everything the soul spoke, felt, and placed its strength in this world upon. All these things, the soul, the soul of each of us will have to account to him. It's written here, for God will bring into judgment every work, every work, thoughts, words, ideas, inclinations, everything. There won't be anything left outside, zero including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Think, my dear friend, of course, that humanly speaking, no one would be saved if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus. Jesus gave his soul in order to rescue ours to save ours, but the truth is that not everybody wants to give their soul to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's why in that person's heart and soul, 
the throne of their soul is occupied with the things of this world, with greed, with lust, with wealth, with the glamour of the world. You know that the devil, he shakes his rattle, just like a, a mother does with a baby for them to stop crying. They shake the rattle, the child looks at that and stops crying. That's it. The devil shakes the rattle of the offers of the world. He knows that as long as people are distracted with themselves or inclined towards themselves and their own desires and lusts, he knows that as long as they are like this, that soul belongs to him. But when that person's mind thinks, then it gives a direction to their soul, and they surrender their soul to the cares of the Lord, and the Lord becomes the Lord that will sit on that person's throne. Now we understand why Jesus said that we should seek first the kingdom of God, which means that Jesus has to reign he has to be sitting on the throne of your heart. He has to be the first. He has to come before everything and everyone. When this happens, then the person becomes happy because the Lord Jesus himself fills that person's soul with happiness and joy. Obviously, that's when his word is fulfilled, when he said that whoever drinks from the water that I shall give him will never thirst again. you never thirst again. This is it. May God bless you, my dear friend. Today, Thursday, we have that special meeting at 8 p.m. in the Temple of Solomon and also in the Universal Churches of the Kingdom of God. That's when we have that special lesson to teach you what you should do in order to have a happy marriage because your marriage, your marriage, our marriage has to reflect our marriage with God. Our marriage here on earth has to reflect our marriage with God, the covenant we have with Him. Okay? May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.